Hi there. If you're looking for some insight about the redesigned 2018 Honda Accord, and I sure hope I can help. My name's Chris Wardlawn. I'm the editor here at Daily News Autos. For this review, we're evaluating the Accord Touring, the top of the line trim level. The test car also has the available turbocharged two liter four cylinder engine, which is a $2,000 upgrade that brings the price to $36,690. Let's take a closer look at the new Accord, which is one of the best family sedans you can buy today. Not only is the new Accord one of the better family sedans you can buy, it's also one of the better looking, at least that's my opinion. I absolutely give the new design a thumbs up. Around front, you've got standard LED headlights for all trim levels, including automatic high beam operation. And then most trims have really great looking aluminum wheels. Uh, in particular, the sport trim and the touring trim that we're driving, uh, they've got 19 inch wheels, which really fill out the flared wheel wells. Uh, speaking of those wheel wells and the fenders, um, I see a little bit of Chevy Malibu in the design there. And that is a compliment to Chevy, absolutely. Uh, where Honda goes Chevy one step better is there's additional sculpturing, especially along the rocker panels. The way that it's kind of carved out and flares out really gives the car a lot of character, as well as the greenhouse, the way that the windows kind of taper toward the back window. Around back, you've got very tidy styling. I recognize that perhaps the uh, pincer style tail lights might not to be to everybody's taste, but uh, I personally think that gives the car a unique signature and makes it easily recognizable, which is no small feat given the fact that so many cars look exactly like one another these days. Now inside, I think the design is outstanding. The dashboard's cut low. You've got the infotainment system kind of sitting here like a tablet sitting on the dashboard. It's a brand new infotainment system. They've got knobs, knobs for volume, power, and tuning. It's like Honda's discovered religion again. Um, in particular, on the Touring model and I think some other trims, you've got this uh, simulated wood that looks exactly like real matte wood finish, but when you touch it, it's obviously not. It's just plastic, but boy, does it really convince you. And that, coupled with a lot of these polished metal accents throughout the cabin, the clear instrumentation, the nice leather, the patterning on everything, I mean, it, this car is, except for its name, a luxury car. As far as comfort is concerned, every trim level except for the base LX gets a 12-way power adjustable driver's seat. And in touring trim, the front seats are heated and ventilated, which very nice feature to have if you live in a warm climate. Uh, the problem with front seat comfort, and I, I swear I can't figure out why Honda missed this, there's no front seat height adjuster for the front passenger. Now, in my household, that's kind of a deal breaker. I mean, my wife just, she will not get a car that forces her to sit on the floor. Um, but I also had my dad in this car, and he's an older guy. He's kind of high-waisted like I am. Uh, so when he was sitting in the car, his chin was almost level with the door panel, and it really frustrated him. Plus, he's older, you know, he's got weaker legs, and uh, the hip point is low enough that it was harder for him to get in and out of the car. So Honda, if you're listening, uh, seat height adjuster. It can be a manual pump. Just please put one in the car already. As far as back seat comfort is concerned, the Accord has got, it's got to have the most comfortable back seat of any family car. And I'm thinking about the full size segment as well. I mean, maybe a Toyota Avalon might be slightly bigger and more comfortable, but this Accord rocks. If you are an Uber or a Lyft driver and you're looking for a new ride for your business, this Accord, I mean, you shouldn't even think about anything else. Just get a new Accord. Okay, uh, your customers are gonna love it. One thing they're probably not gonna love, just like my teenage daughters aren't crazy about it, is the fact that Honda somehow, in their modern redesigned 2018 model year vehicle, forgot to put USB charging ports for the back seat. Now, fine, you know, leave it off the base LX or the sport model or the EX or the EXL, but on a touring trim at almost 37 grand, you need to have USB charging ports in the back seat, if for no other reason than to assuage guys like me who have teenage kids who need to power their smartphones. Now, just as the Accord's got a huge back seat, it's got a huge trunk. It measures 16.7 cubic feet, which is among the biggest in the segment, if not the largest. And although the load floor is a little lumpy, when you think about it, it's actually shaped to allow you to put full-size suitcases on their sides. 
And so you can stack three of them in a row between the wheel wells, and then you can put a fourth one here, and there's still room on either side for things like duffel bags or backpacks. The one thing that's missing, and it seems like with this new Accord, there's always like just one thing that's missing. There's no slot or handle to pull the trunk lid down. And so you have to actually grab it on the outside and get your fingertips dirty to slam the trunk shut. Now, as far as the controls and instrumentation are concerned, Honda is getting back to that classic simplicity for which it's always been known. Uh, the instrumentation is exceptionally clear. You've got a comprehensive driver information center here. Um, the panel where a tachometer would normally be can be a tachometer, or you can go through a whole menu of different things that you can display in that location. Uh, new for 2018, there's a head-up display that shows relevant information, including uh, road sign information. We are in the touring model, so it's got everything on it. And that includes Honda Link subscription services. There are several different packages with several different functions, um, and you pay month to month after a free trial period. Every Accord, however, comes with a basic version of Honda Link. Um, well, I'm sorry, I said every Accord. That's not true. The LX doesn't have it. The LX also does not have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Those are reserved for sport trim and higher. Um, the EXL and the Touring come with a 450 watt 10 speaker premium sound system. And then if you get the Touring trim, which is the car we're in, you also get wireless device charging, a Wi-Fi hotspot, and uh, many other features. Um, another standard thing on all 2018 Accords is Honda Sensing. Now what is that? That's Honda's suite of uh, driver assistance and collision avoidance features, including things like adaptive cruise control, uh, automatic emergency braking, forward collision warning, lane keeping assist. There's a number of features that are included in Honda Sensing. Blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert is not included, but it comes uh, standard on every trim level except for the LX and the Sport models. Now, as far as power is concerned, most Accords have got a turbocharged 1.5 liter four-cylinder engine. Um, my test car's got the available two-liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine. It's making 252 horsepower at 6,500 RPM. Now, amazingly, Honda still offers a six-speed manual transmission and with either of these engines, but you can only get it with Sport trim. Uh, which is fine, I think, by the way. All right, now that we understand uh, the mechanical component set here, uh, I'll tell you that if any car is begging for an all-wheel drive system, this one is. And I'm talking about the Accord with the turbocharged 2-liter. The power when you're fully, when you're accelerating hard, it just overwhelms the front wheels. And so you have to be kind of careful about it if you're trying to get some place in a hurry. Uh, but the 10-speed automatic transmission does perform absolutely brilliantly. And if you select sport mode, it definitely makes the car feel more responsive, quickening and sharpening response. As far as the brakes go, I had no problems with brake pedal feel, response, or modulation. It feels perfectly natural at all times. Uh, and then when I was running the car hard in the mountains, there was a little bit of fade uh, that extended my panic stop distance, but I never once lost confidence in the brakes, which is definitely a, an upgrade over previous Accords and most Hondas to be frank. Uh, the steering is nicely done, the wheel feels good in the driver's hands, it's crisp, it's responsive, it's steady on the highway requiring absolutely no unusual correction, there are no dead spots on center, there's no weird effort levels uh, that, that just cause the steering to feel unnatural. Uh, and the paddle shifters on the steering wheel are uh, very useful for uh, sporty driving. Uh, although I do wish they were a little bit larger, but that's just a very minor complaint. Also, the 19-inch wheels and tires on the Touring model, they supply amazing levels of grip. Uh, if I have any complaint about the car's handling or even its ride quality, it's with the Touring model's adaptive damping suspension. Even when you've got it in sport mode, which is supposed to stiffen the car up, it still feels like the front end bobs a little too much. Now, I don't know, maybe it's because you can see so much of the hood. It's almost like a car from the 1970s, the amount of hood you can see through the windshield. But it could also have to do with the fact that something like 62% of the car's weight sits over the front wheels. So maybe Honda just needs to calibrate that a little bit more because, you know, in normal mode, it's fine if the car's wafting a little bit. But 
In sport mode, you expect it to be stiffened up, and it just simply is not. Now, there's just one other thing to mention about the Accord's driving dynamics, and that's fuel economy. Um, the EPA says that a Touring with the Turbo 2 liter is going to get 26 miles per gallon in combined driving, and I got 24.5 on my test loop, and that included plenty of aggressive driving in sport mode using paddle shifters, so I'd say that the EPA ratings are fairly accurate. Having spent plenty of time driving the new Accord, I would easily recommend it. Sure, there are a few details here that need some attention, but this car represents a clear improvement over the previous Accord, and it's one of the best choices in the family car segment. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope you found it both useful and entertaining given the amount of wind we're dealing with today. If you're looking for more details about the Honda Accord, be sure to read our full review at Daily News Autos, and please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until next time, safe travels.